Hey guys, it's Julia here with Attended Life and I'm excited to share with you a super casual little garden tour walkthrough for what we have going on here in mid-June in the mountains of Western North Carolina. Um, so my intention in sharing this with you is to track how the space evolves um, over, over the seasons and over the next couple years and to just share some of the beauty and simplicity and also some of the challenges and um, failures or mistakes that I'll make along the way um, so we can learn together. So a little bit of background on this space. This is our first our first spring summer here. We moved in nine months ago in September and there was the garden space was here. There were these beds which you'll see the wood is actually rotting and a lot of it has just totally um, totally fallen off and we're just kind of throwing it <laughs> out of the garden as it falls off. Um, so the layout was here. It was completely overgrown. Everything was like as tall as me. We couldn't even walk through. You couldn't see the beds or the walkways, but there were some tomatoes producing and some peppers producing. So I didn't start from totally ground zero here. Um, but I wasn't entirely sure what I was walking into. There's some perennials, but not too many. And yeah, so just really trying to beautify this space and produce a lot of food. And yeah, let's get into it. You'll have to forgive me if the camera's a bit shaky or unsteady. I promise you, I will get better. I'm <laughs> walking in here. We have this nice big hollyhock. I put this in just a few weeks ago and she's growing nice and vigorously so I'm hoping we'll get some blooms this year but not entirely sure. Then I have a couple of these fabric pots just with some radishes and some more lettuces um, that I've been succession sowing through the season so you see these are just growing nicely in there. We got some pole beans back here behind this mint. And you know, obviously this is mint, so it'll start to take over this, this space. A little bit more garlic. We've harvested most of our garlic, but still have like 20% of it left. You can see they're starting to scape and spiral. Some of the leaves on the bottom are starting to yellow, so it should be ready in maybe 10 days or so. We've got some chives, which are brand new and not doing all that much, but just gonna give them some time. Have some stray peppers over here. Um, yeah, all the peppers, we started from seed and none of them are doing all that much. They're not really growing. Um, I'll show you some more throughout the garden. A lot of them are actually starting to flower and produce peppers, but on these little tiny plants that probably won't be able to support them. So definitely gonna give them some nutrients and go from there. Then we have these red cabbages, which are not quite firming up just yet. We've got some lemongrass, some catnip, which will also bush up right here. Got some of these pretty climbing roses. that we just put in a few days ago. It just seems to be doing okay. And the intention is that it'll climb up on this fence. I don't know if the fence will be strong enough to handle this. We may have to, if it gets big enough, put a little arbor situation. Some lamb's ear, some salvia. Under here is some um, mammoth sunflower seeds. So I'm hoping those will come up. I've had to replant them twice now because I didn't really see much action so bee balm some echinacea scattered around here and then some yarrow that I don't know I don't know if it will flower this year all of these we put in this year so they're still pretty small and babyish of course everyone grows a garden for a different reason and any reason is a good reason but I'm really big on utilizing our space 
um, since it's not an infinite amount of space, to really grow food and medicine. So most of these plants are edible or, or medicinal. Um, and we plan to harvest and preserve and eat as much as we can out of this space. I do love the beauty of ornamentals and special flowers. <laughs> Not this year. So back along, along the borders, we have this huge patch of nettle, which is starting to go to seed harvested plenty of nettle to get us through the year. This is a major medicine plant for us. I do have another video on a nettle and cleaver pesto that we have sticking around in the freezer from before she was going to seed and flowering. So check that out. And then over here right next door we have this unruly <laughs> patch of spinach that is starting to bolt. And then a random little patch of radishes, some borage, chaos over here. <laughs> this area is a little bit shady on the outside, this border over here, so kind of still deciding what to do with it. Some more catnip that will bush up, and then we have the big lemon balm bush. Again, major medicine plant for us. I know. The mint family can be controversial in the garden. Um, this was here. This was here before we got here, and so was the nettle, obviously. Um, but I'm fully okay with it, even though she's spreading everywhere, of course, as she does. We're sharing with friends, we're making tinctures and glycerites and drying her for tea throughout the year, so fully okay with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and walk around the borders and then we'll circle back around to weave through the beds and check out what's in there. Now if you haven't already noticed it is quite the weedy situation throughout this whole garden and I don't use the word weed lightly because common plants like dandelion and plantain are absolute must-haves for for me and my family and um, tools that I keep in my medicine chest. Um, but there's just all kinds of grasses and violet, which also another plant I love, but it's just everywhere. And <laughs> there's no keeping up, so I'll show you some close-ups um, in some of the vegetable beds, but what I try to focus on is just weeding directly around the plants and, and hoping that's enough. Because um, there's only so much I can do at this point. I'm, getting to be very pregnant with the young toddler so just have to let some of that go and I'm not going to get that super clean and neat aesthetic um, that I might want someday in the garden. There's a lot of that black landscaping fabric everywhere. We've pulled it up wherever we can because it was actually getting in the way. It was just a couple inches underneath the soil um, in some of the beds and whatnot, and that's just not what we would use personally. So we are pulling that up wherever we can. Um, but I will say it was not doing <laughs> anything to control or suppress the weeds. So in the future, we'll definitely do some cardboard compost, no dig, Charles Dowding type of thing. We have this huge patch of sunchokes, and obviously I got blessed with that. That was already here. So we'll just be appreciating those for the beauty and harvesting some of the tubers for sure, the Jerusalem artichoke. And then underneath these little arched trellises that we put in is going to be a nice sized melon patch. So we'll have watermelon and cantaloupe all throughout here. Is that black landscaping fabric that I was talking about that's everywhere. Um, so this was a new, this is a new planting area that we established and here we did do the cardboard and compost on top. And we only did one layer of cardboard, <laughs> naively so. So we'll definitely do two next time because there's a lot um, popping through it, but, but definitely less than some of the other places. So back here, we just have a little row of radishes. We have some four o'clock flowers, which look like they are getting some good size. We have a row of zinnias. And we got a little patch of corn working its way up here. 
of milkweed right back here. Some more melons. And then some squashes in the back here. And continuing along the border, we have Soul's Mud Kitchen. A little bitty baby chamomile plant. A little echinacea. Just a big flower mix for pollinators. I'm getting pretty tall. I'm not really even sure what this is, but hopefully it's pretty. <laughs> and if not, we'll clear this out to make some space um, soon. But I think we'll wait till it blooms because it looks like it's close. We have our cabbages, which are starting to firm up a bit. You'll see there is some pest damage. I'm not too worried about these ones over here. I'll probably just harvest them a little bit early. We have some kale that looks like it's almost on its way out, but we're still harvesting some for smoothies. A few chard plants, little pepper here, some salvia. This is the weed situation. Like, I'm out here weeding every day and yeah, they're just everywhere. That was all the borders, and now I'll take you into the beds. We have three rows of four beds each, and they're all just a little bit <laughs> different in size. Um, about four by seven for each of them, though. So a nice, a nice planting area. I will mention I am a total amateur. I have grown a little bit of food, um, two seasons worth, I guess you could say, but that just means a couple of raised beds in rental houses, which of course counts, um, but this feels a lot different and really happy to, to be at this space now. Right up here in this first bed, this was a bed of greens and they are, and they have been bolting for quite some time now. So I've been pulling and pulling um, as they start to bolt, as I've been saving some seeds all winter it was just spinach and kale and lettuces and now we have some warmer weather plants in more random peppers that again are are, are not doing much although they are starting to fruit this is on a tiny little plant so if you have any tips for that do let me know I probably should have pulled any fruits off earlier but I am too late for that. I guess this pepper has a little bit more height on the other ones. Um, yeah, and so I'm about to pull this kale. As you can see, it's bolting. This arugula is bolting. This has actually just happened in the last couple of days. This was one of our favorite lettuces. This beautiful, this beautiful lettuce. Okra over here. Some new lettuces, a mix that we'll use for baby greens starting to come up. And then some zucchini plants that it looks like I need to thin out, but I'm gonna have some more space open up, so we will plant some more. To the next bed. You might be wondering why these marigolds are so close to the garlic, because I'm gonna pull this in, again, about 10 days or so. <laughs> So I thought I could just do a little border that, get some pest protection for, for the tomatillos and tomatoes that will go there next. Um, this whole bed was garlic before through the winter that was planted last fall, so I'm happy to have some space back in the future. I definitely won't do two or three full beds of garlic. Maybe we'll set up a new planting area, kind of back and away somewhere. Um, but I was, I was missing the space. That's why the pepper plants are in random <laughs> corners around the border. So we have a little bit of nasturtium that doesn't look all that happy because I had to move this to make some space for the tomatillos, which are gonna get a cage soon. I have a couple more of these that need to go into the ground. We'll definitely be canning some green salsas, some verdes. Then we have some little flower seedlings starting to come up. I think these are bachelor's buttons, which will just go right in the middle here of this bed. I think those will get nice and tall, so that'll be nice and pretty. We've got some cherry tomatoes. It looks like they're really starting to fruit. So 
so it shouldn't be long now. It will be a happy day. We started all of our tomatoes from seed in a closet because <laughs> we don't have any sunny windows and that was our first time so it's exciting. Some more nasturtium here, some more random peppers, full bed of garlic. <laughs> almost ready to harvest. We'll start pulling these very soon. And with the garlic we've already harvested, plus everything that's left, we won't have to buy any for the whole year. We'll have enough to powder, gift to friends, and to make medicine with. And coming back here, we did put all these cattle panel in just a few weeks ago. We have a bed of tomatoes here. And this is actually one of the weediest beds of all. I did put some straw mulch down and the grass is really bad, but actually the grass was really bad even before, before the mulch. It was worse in this bed than the others. So just kind of experimenting and yeah, taking everything really lightly. And then we have some zinnias along the border here. Through the back side of the garden I have a couple of these tomatoes in the fabric pots which are so much bigger than the ones in the ground. Um, I will talk about my soil now. So the soil in all the beds is um, not great. It's not the worst ever either and I definitely tried to nourish it through the winter with mulch and grass clippings and compost and all of that um, so we're just gonna have to keep on working on that and building our soil so you see those tomatoes in the fabric pots are significantly bigger happier and healthier than the ones in the ground and that's because they're in a uh, organic planting mix um, so they're just a little bit more the soil is a little bit more nutrient dense for them and I have fed have fed the tomato plants in the ground. Um, I'm not too too worried about them. I think they'll do okay. I think they'll produce, but we'll just have to keep building the soil. Have these nice, healthy, established echinacea plants. Another medicine plant for us. This is one of the perennials that was here, so very grateful for that. On this trellis, we have a whole bed full of cucumbers. Definitely for pickles. Then I have some random little pole beans that I tried to fit in the corners over here. Another bed of tomatoes. It looks like, I've tied some of these up, but it looks like some of them are ready for some support. So that is on the to-do list for sure. These ones are fruiting nicely too. So hope I can keep them happy. We have some purple basil surrounding these tomatoes on both sides. And then over here we have some more of the border sunflowers, which I'm so happy are finally starting to of tomatoes and so in true mom of young child fashion my toddler ripped out all the labels <laughs> on our tomato plants so for the most part I have no idea what's what um, and it'll be a surprise <laughs> and then we have some parsley coming in behind these tomatoes Then we're at the peas, which are just about done here. That side is definitely done. And it looks like we have a few more days, maybe a week left on this plant before we pull it. We have some nasturtiums on all the edges here. Some radishes that I will be pulling right after this video. <laughs> A lot to do tonight. Then we'll come here. This bed is significantly longer than the other one, so I want this to be an herb bed, 
hopefully some of the perennials will make it and survive the winter and bush up and get really big. So we got just some rosemary here, some sage, chamomile, which I want to bush up. I have a couple plants in here, this one bigger, and then there's a smaller one. Have some fennel on the border here. Some more lavender, St. John's wort. And then some calendula, a few different varieties of lavender, some Tulsi, some beautiful big comfrey, which was already here. We're making lots of medicine with that. Some more basil, some more calendula. There's some thyme hiding in here. I don't know if that's gonna make it or if that's gonna get shaded out. We shall see. Some creeping thyme. That's turning into a nice little bush here. We've got some carrots that are probably just about ready to, to harvest. Let's check. I'm gonna check from the other side. My belly's in the way. Cilantro, a very upset eggplant that I need to diagnose. <laughs> Beautiful pollinator flower mix that we put in quite some time ago that's just now starting to bloom. Some beets, three rows of beets, which have been in the ground for a while. These might just be ready to harvest too. Let's see. All right, all right, not bad at all. And then coming back through here, we've got a few more cabbages, which are getting nice and firm. And these ones are also getting just munched and attacked. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but I've... We have some onions here that are looking like they might be ready to harvest because their tops are falling over. So maybe I'll go through and pull some of those tonight. Just planted a nice long row of carrots back through here because this stuff will be coming out soon. Some random marigolds that I thought would help with the pests on the cabbages. <laughs> they didn't all that much. And here we have some shishito peppers. Not a super robust plant. Again, I just hope it can support the peppers. Then in here, see this, all this wood just completely rotted out from around this bed, so it's not lined at all. We have some more beets, a few different varieties, and some bolting lettuces that are just about ready to pull. And we'll give it a few days to, to think about what's gonna go in next. We're definitely still harvesting off of all these lettuces that haven't bolted yet. They're still delicious. And then back here in this last bed, we have some squash, some okra, and green beans that my sweet one and a half year old was able to plant herself when I just showed her, I just made the holes for her to put the seeds in. So it'd be really cool for her to watch those grow. So that is the main garden that we have here. So you can see hopefully a lot of food, a lot of weeds, a lot of medicine. Let's head to the greenhouse and check out what's growing in there. We have an absolutely lush and beautiful and flowering elderberry bush, which is more like a tree. <laughs> and we'll come up to the greenhouse right here behind these nice healthy fig trees, which are also starting to fruit. 
in the last couple weeks we've done a lot of work in here. This was another space that was completely overtaken. So we went in, we did put cardboard down, mulched the walkways, cleared everything, and yeah. Over here we have a little potato patch, which seems to be doing quite well. We've been hilling up with some organic compost and mulching with some straw. I'm thinking these will be ready to harvest in a few weeks or so. And in this bed over here, we've got a little pumpkin, another little pumpkin, an insane amount of weeds. I just cleared this a few days ago, completely cleared it a few days ago. Um, yeah, and just a few more little pumpkin mounds. So my intention is for this to be like a little pumpkin patch. And there's actually nothing planted in this bed yet. This is all weeds. By the potatoes, we've recently put in some sweet, sweet potatoes. There's some zinnias back there, some okra, some squash, some more of this relentless weed, some horseradish, which I know will spread, so I'm hoping that will end up taking up a good amount of space here. Major medicine plant for us. I'm okay with having a lot of it and sharing with friends. This was a greenhouse. <laughs> it did have plastic over it when we first moved, but the winter weather just blew, ripped the plastic and blew it down. So we just left the PVC and put some chicken wire so that animals can't get in. And we're just gonna leave it like that for now and decide what we're gonna do with it after after the season is done. We're thinking of maybe converting this to some kind of pig situation. I'm getting a couple pigs. So now let's check out the berry patch. Over here we have what I like to call the berry patch. Looks like the fireflies are starting to come out. It's getting a little darker, <laughs> but we're almost done here. So we have about 15 strawberry plants that we put in here um, just this year. We have these nice established blueberry bushes. And our mid-June garden tour there. I'll be back for a check-in in a few weeks to show you what's fruiting and what's growing and hopefully some abundant harvest. I'm gonna pull a lot of those beets and carrots tonight um, and some of those bolted lettuces will go later this week. Some new things will go in. So yeah, it's, I'm excited to get to share this with you guys and if you have any tips about anything that I talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments below or find us on Instagram and we'll talk soon.